Hello everyone and welcome back to the YouTube channel. If you're here for the first time, hi. My name is Busari Imolayo and I'm a registered nurse based in Nigeria. On this channel, I film content related to nursing and healthcare. And in today's video, I am going to be talking about the nursing care plan for diabetes mellitus. If you are new here, please click on the subscribe button to join the YouTube family and also on the bell icon so you don't miss out whenever I drop a new video. With that being said, let's get right into the topic for today. get into the nursing care plan if you have not watched the video on diabetes or you have no idea about what diabetes is the various types signs and symptoms and pathophysiology i'm going to leave the link to the video on diabetes down in the description box below so you can watch that before you come back or you can decide to watch it after you've watched this video whichever one is convenient so today we are going to work in on one actual diagnosis and one risk diagnosis related to diabetes mellitus so first let us get familiar with the nursing Diagnosis. So the first nursing diagnosis is imbalanced nutrition less than body requirements related to insulin deficiency evidenced by recent weight loss and fatigue. Now this is an actual diagnosis because the problem statement is imbalanced nutrition less than body requirements and the etiology is insulin deficiency while the data um, that is pointing towards this diagnosis is recent weight loss and fatigue. Patients with diabetes mellitus lose a lot of weight and they are generally tired because of their condition. The second diagnosis is risk for unstable blood glucose related to deficient knowledge of diabetes management. Now, this is a risk diagnosis because it has not happened yet. Even though the blood glucose level is elevated, what you want to do is to control it, but there is a chance that it will become unstable because the patient doesn't really know much about diabetes and how to manage it. So this, in this situation, is a risk diagnosis. Now that we've understood the nursing diagnosis we'll be working with today, let's get into the nursing interventions, the objective, nursing intervention and scientific rationale before we eventually go on to the evaluation. So the objective for the first diagnosis which is imbalanced nutrition less than body requirement is that the patients will gain weight towards usual range before discharge. In other words, the patient's weight will become normal before the person goes home. Now, in this situation, you can decide to indicate the exact range or the numeric figure of the weight you want to achieve, but you have to put into consideration the age of the patient. But to be on the safer side, if you are not sure, then you can just put normal range before discharge. So the first intervention is to weigh the patient daily. You have to check the patient weight every day. And the reason you are doing that is that it will serve as a baseline data because when you are admitting the patient, you check the weight. You know the, um, how much the patient was weighing when he or she came to the hospital. So when you are checking the weight subsequently, you would be able to know, okay, is the weight increasing or decreasing? The next thing is to discuss eating habits with the patient. You need to educate the patient on the food that they need to avoid and possibly if you have admitted the patient you need to encourage the patient not to get their relatives to bring food for them like when you will notice or when they want to during visiting hours basically tell them the food they are not supposed to eat why they shouldn't eat it because it could aggravate the blood glucose level and the rationale is just to achieve dietary needs of the patient you need um, the patient to gain weight and you also don't want to aggravate the patient's condition in the process so you have to like balance it and the patient has to be aware the next thing is to create a diet plan and when you're doing this you have to identify the food preferences of that individual as well as their ethnic and cultural values now, for example, chicken and fish are, brought, are both protein, right? Yeah, but you may want to plan your patient's meal to include a lot of protein while that patient says my religion or my ethic value or I don't like fish. So in that situation, you have to substitute fish for chicken as long as the person is going to get protein. So the rationale is that when you include food preferences in the meal plan, the patient would cooperate. Because obviously, if it's somebody that doesn't like fish or hasn't been eating fish, but you give chicken, which he or she is more familiar with, 
then the person would be more likely to cooperate than when you give them something they don't want now that you've gotten your patient to eat well like the right quantity and food containing the right nutrients the next thing you need to be careful of is um autonomic neuropathy so you always have to escortate your patient's bowel sounds you need to always assess for reports of nausea vomiting on digested food abdominal pains bloating once your patient complains of this it could be because of the decreased motility caused by hyperglycemia and it can also be autonomic neuropathies so you need to continuously observe your patient finally for the first diagnosis you have to administer prescribed medications such as mesoclopramide which may be prescribed to treat symptoms of um, autonomic neuropathies just as i mentioned earlier on now when you're administering drug you need to know that you have to administer the right dose through the right route at the right time to the right patient you need to be sure of those parameters ensure the drug is not expired check for adverse effects or side effects now moving to the second diagnosis which is risk for unstable blood glucose and we earlier related it to deficient knowledge on diabetes management so our objective is that the patient will achieve and also maintain blood glucose in a satisfactory range that's the objective for the second diagnosis. So the first intervention is to assess the patient's blood glucose level before meal and at bedtime. This is basically going to be done if the patient is admitted. If the patient isn't admitted, then that may have to be done by the patient or someone living with the patient or the caregiver and the rationale behind this is to obtain a baseline data you want to know the actual level of the blood glucose when the old treatment started so that eventually when you keep comparing you know if the person is responding to treatments or not now when the patient is on admission you would have to administer insulin now if indicated and when required now prn requires refers to when required and the rationale is to help maintain blood glucose within normal range. Now, if the blood glucose levels are too high, the physician may prescribe insulin, which it is the nurse the nurse's duty to administer. And you also have to comply with the rights of drug administration when doing this. We stated earlier that the patient's risk for unstable blood glucose is related to deficient knowledge on diabetes management so the next intervention is to allow the patient ask questions about the diagnosis and treatment regimen and the reason for this is that it will help the nurse to identify areas where they need to give the patient more information as regards to diagnosis and treatment so that the patient will basically understand better once the patient has asked questions on area where he or she is confused and the next thing for the nurse to do is to educate the patient on those areas and once this is done it will improve the patient's understanding of the diagnosis and therapy and also boost cooperation the next thing is to also educate the patient on how to check their blood glucose on their own using the glucometer when um the values are high and low you teach them the normal range of the values then how to administer insulin that's if the patient is going to be on insulin instead of oral hypoglycemic agents and the reason for this is that the patient will be able to take care of themselves or the caregiver will be able to take care of the patient after the patient has been discharged finally you have to educate the patient on importance of complying to their lifestyle modifications such as change in diets which is very important then they may have to start wearing slippers at home just to prevent injury to their legs and so many other things. You educate them on the importance of those things as well as complying to their medication so as to reduce risk of non-compliance. When they know the importance of complying, then they will not um, take the risk of not complying because non-compliance can elevate the blood glucose levels more and even make the whole thing become complicated for the evaluation you need to reflect what your evaluation has to reflect is that your initial objective was achieved for example for the first objective we said that patients would achieve um weights within the normal range for the second um diagnosis we said the patient will achieve and maintain normal blood glucose level you, your evaluation is going to state like patients um, achieved weights within normal range or patients achieved 
and maintained blood glucose level within normal range because if you are saying it wasn't achieved or you exceed the time frame you have given you are more or less contradicting everything you've said and you are eventually going to lose your mark that's in the exam purpose all right guys i hope we learned one or two things from this tutorial don't forget to follow golden pen on instagram and join the whatsapp community by sending a dm to the whatsapp number on your screen I'll be more than happy to have you within the community and I'll see you in the next video. Bye!